So I'm getting ready to do a concrete patio behind the house here. Now, turns out I am doing this during the social distancing situation. So I'm gonna have to do this whole project myself. I gotta bring in all the dirt back here by myself. I'm going to have to hand mix all the concrete myself, lay everything myself. It's not an ideal way to do a concrete project, but I'm gonna show it can be done. Probably gonna hate myself when I'm done with this, but here we go. First thing I did was I removed the grass, got rid of the organics. Then I tried to grade the ground to a level that I thought would work well for this project. Then I brought in form boards and I laid them out loosely to get a rough idea. And I went ahead and I set the stakes for the very first form board. Now since this is a porch, we do want the water to shed off. And typically what we do is run like a line with a pitch in that line. In this case, I'm going to use the old porch patio and follow that pitch. However, I want to keep the new pad below the height of the existing porch flap. So what I'm going to do is simply I'm just going to take this two by four scrap piece to inch and a half. I'm going to use that to make marks on my existing pad and follow those marks to get my new pitch. I'm going to follow the pitch on this side and then I'll keep that pitch throughout all the way down but I'll probably put a little bit of pitch this way too to keep the water going this way so first things first I'm going to attach this board to these stakes get it set as my kind of primary starting point and then I'll work the rest of the form off of this so I made a line with the block here and then I transferred that line with the level here and then I'm gonna go ahead and use that to mark the height of where I tack off my form board then I'm going to come in with a couple screws. I'm going to try to come in from behind. I may have to put one or two in here, but that's okay. It's nice that I have these long stakes, so when I go to break the form, I can use these stakes as leverage. But I will try to get the screws from the back if I can. Now with this form board in place, I'm going to use it to reference all the other form boards. So first what I do is set this one over here, and I want to find the length for the space in between. And in this case, I want the edge of the new concrete pad to coincide with this corner. So I'm simply just gonna take a measurement from my form board to that corner. In this case, it's 83. And I'm going to match that down there as well. Now I'll do is tack some stakes in and then fine tune my pitch and everything from there. I used a string and line level to mark a line on the new stakes at the same level of the first form board. So now that I got these two sides up, I simply need to attach the end piece and don't really need to measure because it just goes from this end, butted up to here, and then it will cap off on that side and just tack this off. And I'm keeping this in line with my porch plane here. So now I just tack this off and I'll have most of my form ready to go. But what's nice about this is since I got these two set up, that means when I just tack this on where it's supposed to go, it will be in the right alignment for the correct pitch. So boom. I screw on these temporary blocks just to help make sure that my form board is level with the other forms. Okay, so I've got the whole perimeter form in place now. The takeaway from this was, is I wanted to have as flat a surface as possible, but I wanted it to shed water this way away from the house. And then I actually wanted to shed water this way a little bit too because I have to leave some space between the new pad and the house. And one of the primary reasons it's for that is to be able to treat for termites every few years or so. But by leaving that space, if the water rushes down in there, it could kind of channel some of the soil out of there. Instead of having water rush in there, I put it a little bit of pitch this way as well. And the way I did that is when I ran that line, I got the level mark off that line and then I drew a mark in about an inch less than that and that gives me just a little bit of pitch this way so i boxed off the rest back there i just took a level board and went that way and then kind of connected the two boards there so i'm gonna be a little high in the back i'll pitch this way and this way and we're good to go so now next what i'll do is tomorrow i think i get some of my supplies a tamper and the bad concrete so i'll tamper all this down get this nice and compact and then i'll probably dig little ditches 
around the perimeter. And then I'm gonna decide, can I fill all this all at once myself or pour it all at once, mix all the bags myself and do this? Or do I wanna do this in two sections? So we'll see what happens and go from there. All right, so I decided for a few reasons to split this project up into two separate isolated slabs. One is just logistics. This is just me doing this project. I hand mix these bags. I don't really feel like mixing them all at once just to make sure it go a lot easier if I break it up. So I'm gonna do this section first and then that section. And then two, it's gonna give me a break point. I'm gonna do a cold joint here where I'll pour this tonight. Hopefully I'll pour that tomorrow. And so that will actually give me kind of a control break point, if you will, whereas if I just had one solid piece, the concrete could possibly crack. In three, since I'm doing this slab or slabs without any reinforcement, I think it's actually the safer way to go because what happens is if I were to get any isolated flexion, I guess is a good way to think of it. If it's one long pad, it's more likely to crack somewhere. However, if I have two individual pads, the concrete may move independently of each other and be less likely to crack. I'm not using reinforcement in this rebar or mesh or anything like that. And I don't think it's necessary for this kind of a small project. I'm not gonna put a lot of weight on this. Maybe a couple people walking it, that's it. No big trucks or anything like that. Rebar is really most effective for flexion type forces. Concrete can handle a lot of compression forces. So you just walk in, it's fine. The problem is, is if you have a lot of weight in one area, like say if something touches here, it may actually bend the concrete and that bending is gonna stretch the concrete and that will actually crack it. But on something like this, it's not really a big deal because I'm not gonna have a lot of weight on it. So I'm not worried about it. That's more important for like big beams or heavy duty pads, things like that. So for this, it should be fine. Now, the other thing I did is I dug little trenches, kind of like little footers, if you will, but they'll kind of do a couple things. They'll kind of beef up the concrete at the edges. And then two, it might help minimize sliding movement because I have kind of these recesses in the ground. Next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill this area with some chunk concrete that I already have. You gotta be careful with this because of the pieces you put in here are too tall or the concrete pad's too shallow you potentially could get some cracking through the concrete where that structure is so I'm gonna experiment with anyway and put some in but I'm gonna put probably the bigger pieces in these ditches here and I think I'm gonna be okay and plus the old concrete chunks will obviously help me on the total volume of concrete I need in here I think what I'll do first though is I'm gonna oil these forms with some used motor oil just to kind of help take the forms off and then I'll backfill with some of these rocks and then I'm gonna haul a bunch of concrete bags back here, start mixing and throw it in here. Now, another note is a lot of times when people do a pad like this, they'll put a bunch of gravel in here. And that is a very good idea. And in a perfect world, it would probably be nice to put some gravel underneath this slab. Helps with drainage and some stability and things like that. In this case, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not that worried about it. So anyway, here we go. So first thing, I basically watered down the soil and the rocks, and then I went ahead and opened the concrete and then mixed it with water as instructed. Now a note here is I am using fiber reinforced concrete. I think this is a big help, especially when not using reinforcement. And then as I mix it, I simply fill it in between the forms, and then I use straight edge pieces of wood to basically level the concrete between the forms. And in this case, I had to use different sizes pieces of wood because I had that angle of the house that made it a little bit complicated but I ultimately ended up using a flat 2x4 section, laid it down between both forms, and kind of wiggled it back and forth, leveling the concrete as I went. So I'd mix concrete, I'd pour it in, and then I'd use a screed to level it off, and I did that all the way until we were done. So that was exhausting. I don't ever recommend trying to mix concrete by hand. It was a pain in the butt. So I let the concrete sit for a while and then I went and I used a roundover edge for the corners and then I came back with a magnesium trowel to kind of flatten out any rough spots and smooth it out a little bit. Didn't have to be too perfect because then I came back with a broom to do a rough finish just to put some traction on this because it is going to be an outside patio. And then the next day, the first thing I did was I wet the concrete with a hose. It's very important to keep fresh concrete wet for several days at least. And then the exciting part was taking the form off. It's always fun when you take the forms of concrete. I just needed to take this one off for the next pour. But when I took it off, the edge looked pretty good. So I was very happy with it. And there it is. So I got half of the patio done yesterday and thank goodness I cut the pour in half because 
it was a pain to just do that half of it. It took me about 17 or 18 bags, 80 pound bags. I had to hand mix them and hand mixing that many bags was a pain. So I'm gonna pour the remaining section of the day. I'm gonna mix concrete, pour it. I'm gonna hand mix again. I'm doing this all myself. After every doing it yesterday, I don't recommend anybody do a concrete job by themselves. It's really a lot involved and it's time sensitive and it's really tough to do this. So I think I may have bit off more than I could chew with this one, but we're gonna make it work. So start off by adding some water just to moisten things up. Then I come in and tamp down the soil again. And I dig out around the edges to create kind of a deeper section of concrete. And in this case, I dug some holes in the center just so I can add some bigger chunks of recycled concrete. And then I kind of put some smaller rocks in there as well and I organized them so that very large rocks were not where they weren't supposed to be. Then it was time for the concrete. Just kind of crack the bag open and added the water as needed and then kind of mix it up. You know, no special magic trick here, just very laborious. And then once it's mixed, I just add it between the forms. And basically this is all I did <laughs> until I got all the way to the end there. Um, I leave out, from here on out, I'm gonna leave out a lot of the hand mixing. This was the very hardest, that was the hardest part of the project by far. Um, but basically I mix the concrete and then I add it between the forms and I kind of tap and tamper it as I go with the shovel and the rake as well. Then I use a straight two by four to screed the concrete as I go just to level it off to the height of the forms. And I keep adding, mixing, adding and screeding. One thing you to do note with this is since it takes a long time, you do get the concrete to cure um, where you started and then it's a little bit more wet where you finished obviously so that's one caveat to pay attention to. So I did this until I get the whole thing formed and then I came back with a magnesium trowel to basically smooth out any rough spots. And then I also used a round over corner tool as well to soften the edges and then I came back and I did a broom finish and I show these techniques in video one if you are curious. And so there it is. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The forms came off nice and easy and it was a lot of work, but it um, worked out pretty well. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm about a third of way through the fill pile. And it's taken me a few hours to do this much, and it's fun stuff, it's a good workout. Time for a break, this is exhausting. Um, what I am gonna do though is I'm gonna hose some of these piles in between to kind of help settle some of the new fill. One of the good things about watering the fill down is it, it actually kind of self-levels the sand for you as you go. So that's kind of a cool thing and then hopefully it helps compact the new sand so i'm just bringing back loads at a time and then every now and then uh hosing them down real good with water and i'm kind of creating a dam so the water stays on the side i am filling and i think it's working out pretty well just a lot of work so there it is all 18 yards of dirt and what I learned from it is I'm not as young as I used to be. It took me two and a half days to get it all back here with just the one wheelbarrow and a shovel. So I let the fill sit a few days as is here and I sprayed it occasionally and my hope was that gravity over a few days would help kind of compress some of the fill itself. So now what I'm going to do is just to kind of lightly grate it out and then hand compact it for the first time and I'm kind of eyeballing it. I just want to kind of get it relatively close and then I'll think I'll come back and set up the forms kind of temporarily to kind of see my exact elevations and then adjust the fill from there. But I'm gonna to try to tamper as much as I can. I'll probably do it several times, watering down in between to try to get this new fill as stable as I can before pouring the concrete. All right, so today is our first 
concrete pour day for this new section of the patio. I'm going to try some things differently here. I'm going to use a drill mixer, see if that works much better than doing the hand mixing. I'm hoping it does. First thing I need to do though is get the concrete to the back. So I just got to haul a bunch of concrete to the back, then we'll get started. So the first thing I did is I laid out the perimeter form. And what I wanted to do here was match the pitch of my existing original concrete slab. And that pitch in this case was about a quarter inch per foot. And then I mounted the foreboard to the stakes I put in the ground, checked the pitch, and then started to set the other perimeter forms. And then to get the correct level and pitch on the opposite side, I simply used a line level to match the foreboard on the other side. Then it turns out I was actually a little high with my grade, so I had to come back in and remove some of the fill and just raked it kind of level and then took some buckets to remove everything. And then I had to tamp the whole thing again with the hand tamp, which is actually pretty exhausting. And then I set the center form. My goal with this project was to pour it in four separate sections. So I was gonna start in this first top corner here. I did some final excavation and tamped it down again. And then I was pretty much ready to go. So I started mixing the concrete, mixed it with a drill. I'm not gonna show the mixing here, but the point was I mixed it, put it in the forms, and then tamped it down with either the float or the rake. And then I screeded it with a straight two by four. Pretty straightforward, just got a rough level and filled the whole thing up, tamped it all in, and then once that was through, I came back with magnesium float to kind of smooth it out as best I could. And then once that was done, I came back over with a round over uh, edge tool and then kind of rounded over the corners. And then I came back and did a rake finish. And then hours later, I removed the forms. And I was moving so quickly, I could start pouring the second section in the same day, which was phenomenal. And so same thing here, just mix the concrete up and poured it in. Now in this case, it was different. I did the screening in a different direction. And the reason was, is my concrete was still fresh on the, on the other pad. And so I didn't want to screed over the new pad and I wanted to keep my joint as clean as I could. So I'm, I've just finished this a few minutes ago. I'm gonna let it sit a little bit, let some of the bleed water dissipate. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to do the round over edges. And then I will do a quick broom finish. And then this half of this patio section will be done. So pretty productive day. I was able to pour two pads in one day. Uh, thank mainly to this thing, uh, this drill. <laughs> And mixing in the bucket is far more efficient and far easier than mixing concrete by hand in a bucket with a shovel. I've been able to increase my workload at least two times, so this is a pretty efficient machine here. So pretty stoked I got it. Okay, things went so well yesterday. I want to be ambitious today and try to fill this whole void here. Now my original plan was to break this into two sections just like I did there. However, I'm mixing the concrete so efficiently with the mixer, I think I can do all this feasibly in a few hours. Now the problem with it is, is it, it changes some variables in the project. Originally I was gonna have another slab here, so that would give me a control joint, or cold joint at least, right here, it's kind of a break point. Now I do this whole slab, I'm not gonna have that joint. So what I'm planning on doing is coming back, I'm gonna put a control joint, oh hey kitty. I'm gonna put a control joint right here. The problem is the control joint tool I have is relatively shallow and this is going to be five to six inches deep and I'm afraid it's not going to be a deep enough joint to allow that break easy. So I'm going to do something a little unorthodox here. I've got an old piece of hardy panel and I'm going to bury it just a little bit and let it stick up a little bit out of the sand just to make kind of a little break on the bottom side of the concrete underneath where that control joint will be. So in theory, it should help thin the concrete there, and then if the concrete is gonna break at some point, it will snap there. We'll see what happens. So what I'm gonna do is I've got water ready to go at the right levels in these buckets. I got water in there too. I'm gonna basically put 
bag of concrete in there. Gonna mix it up with this drill. This works very well, goes pretty quickly. And then pour it, and I'm gonna pour it along this way, and then screed back. So here we go. Okay, so that was a lot. In hindsight, it was probably a little bit more ambitious. Maybe should have broken up two sections. What happens is, since you can only work so fast by yourself, even with the drill, when you pour a big area like this, it takes a while. Your set times differ greatly. So where I started first is setting up before where I finish. So it makes it tricky when I come back and do the finishing, doing the round over corners, and doing the break joint in the middle. So a little tricky but it'll work. I'm glad I got it done. It's gonna be raining in the next few days, but oh my gosh, it kicked my butt. But again, thanks to this drill, I was able to do this one big section in one day. Not that I recommend it. In, in reality, and I've said this before, concrete projects are meant for a solid team, a team that knows what they're doing. Ideally, you would get a truck full of concrete out here with a solid team of guys to work the concrete. Doing it by yourself is not very efficient. Um, however, if you're ambitious and you got the time, you need a project, you can do it. So in my case, what I want to do is I want to pour a new concrete slab adjacent to this existing concrete slab. However, the new slab is going to be lower. It's going to come to about here. So I don't want to put anything in here. I want to pour the concrete flush with this. So basically what I did is I took a piece of fencing material that I had laying around and I simply cut a notch in it on one end. And that notch happens to be the height difference that I need between the existing concrete pad and the new concrete pad. It sits right there like that. The other side sits flush, and then that allows me to get the elevation of the concrete I want as well as the pitch at the same time. And you can see on this end, I actually have another notch cut up, and that happened to be for another height difference there. That pad there is a little bit higher up, so I could use this screed for two different sections of new concrete. So this one is pretty simple. You actually want to put a control joint in a location where you want the concrete to crack if it's going to crack. The problem is when you use a tool like this, it may just not score the concrete deep enough to ensure that the crack actually does happen there. So basically my tip is, is this to shallow the concrete on the bottom side of the concrete pad. I have some old pieces of hardy plank trim, and so I'm just going to cut those to fit in there and let those stick into the poured concrete just a, a couple of inches or so. And the thought behind this is, is that shallows the concrete there, and then above that we will have this control joint, so in theory the concrete should crack relatively easy there. So I think it's a pretty decent idea. If you think this isn't a great idea, you concrete pros, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So in this case, I'm going to have three control joints. So I put a board there, a board here, and a board there, 
and then after I pour the concrete I will come back and simply do the groove joint right over it and then we'll have a relatively short distance between the finished top of the concrete and this so the concrete should snap right there. Now that the concrete has been poured and it's sat for a little bit and I did sort of the first layer of troweling, I'm gonna go ahead and use my groove tool just as you would with any other pour. So the only difference in this pour is we have the fiber cement board underneath that is just basically making this area right here a little bit shallower. Once we put this groove in there, in theory that should make a weak point. So if the concrete does break or when it's gonna break, it's gonna break right along that crack. So we really won't even be able to see it. So that's the idea. What I did in this case to make it easier, I put a screw down here to mark where this end of the groove needs to go. And then I have a mark on my wall over there. I'm simply gonna use my screed board as kind of a straight edge. I'll put some weight on it here. So I think it's gonna work fine and I think it's a good tip to make sure that our control joints do what they're supposed to do and that's crack where we want the concrete to crack when the concrete's going to crack. So thanks for watching, I'm Joe Kistel. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and give it a thumbs up. Now I'm not claiming to be a concrete expert, but I recently completed a concrete patio that I did completely by myself, basically because of the social distancing situation. And I had to mix 150 or so 80 pound bags of concrete. And I started off the project just mixing them by hand. I put the concrete in a pail, mix it with a shovel, and that was excruciating. I probably mixed 40 bags or so that way. For the rest of the project, I decided to try this. You know, all this is is a relatively inexpensive drill with a bit and it's got a lot of torque. I can mix each bag in less than a minute and it still took some energy but it allowed me to move relatively quickly considering this being a one man job. When I made this investment, I'm not sponsored anything by the company that made this. I'll leave a link in the video description below but I was like well for the price of this if it gets me through the 100 bags, if it burns up after then it's worth it and it got me through and worked great. And basically all I did is I put the concrete in a bucket. I got a 10 gallon bucket just because these are 80 pounds bags of concrete and that seemed to work real well put the water in first the pre-mixed amount of water put the concrete in and put the town for this drill on the low setting mix for about a minute and voila I could cook with gas with that method so it worked very well for me and I got this whole project done or the last two-thirds of the project done in record timing <laughs> compared to how I did the first third of the project the, the remaining two-thirds went twice as fast thanks to this thing so I would like to ask the concrete pros out there do you think there's any negative to mixing with a drill like this I figured for a concrete patio it's fine I don't know if there's any chemistry consideration mixing the concrete violently with something like this but I assume not um, but if you think so just leave your comments down below and I appreciate it thanks for watching guys Joe Kistel boom and we play outside a lot about our concrete pad and every day we work on our concrete pad it's going to get easier and so when we do it we'll we'll finish it up in a moment here and we're going to get somewhere in all to go with my concrete pad thanks for watching i'm new <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.